and welcome to the launch of Open Source's first and only virtual art sale. My name is Lily. And I'm Dennis. Yes, this year, because of the pandemic, instead of getting together in person and fighting over art, we are doing a more civilized art sale. All of the proceeds go to supporting Open Source Gallery. No bidding. No. No sending our children in to add a final bid in before the closing bell. Sorry, kids. Actually, it sounds kind of boring. Boring? No. On the contrary, we'll be able to use lots of technology to make this the most exciting non-auction we've ever had. Technology? There's going to be technology. Oh, spooky kind of technology. Like, like this one. Check it out. Hi, I'm Saisa Kersabakani and I'm an artist. Open Source is an important institution for artists like me because they gave us a platform to showcase our works that are often unseen. Open Source also supports the artists by giving us artist fees and making sure that our works are presented in a very dignified manner. Open Source also gave me a first show in New York and uh, it's one of the my favorite shows that I've ever done because it's not just the usual gallery, but also we did a public exhibition, which I really love. And open source, they are so easy to work with. They're the best. Please support open source. Thank you. I see. So a bunch of pre-taped videos. Well, passing. yeah, yeah. Um, but normally you'd have to find the artist among the crowd of people and then nose up to them. And then it might be kind of awkward because I mean, nobody likes to be interrupted. When yeah, they're yeah, yeah. What other kinds of technology do we have in store? Well, we've got some cool places to go. An online art shop along with, a, wait, did you hear that? What or who was that? Is that Monica? Hello? Monica, why are you in a cage? Hello? We've got to help get her out. Wait, I think I know what's going on. Anybody Moni else? can't escape the evil COVID-19 economic slump that she's in. Oh, what should we do? It's not what we should do. It's what you should do. Tell them more. Hello? Well, first of all, you can go into Can the fundraiser art shop when it opens right Anybody after this else? launch and buy some of the wonderful art there. It's been donated by esteemed artists, some of whom have had shows at open source and some who will have shows at open source. We also have merchandise such as bags, masks, t-shirts. And after you fill your yeah. shopping cart with art, then you can always yeah. donate. donate. That's right. This year we need to raise yeah. $25,000. If you donate now, following the link in the chat box, then we can help uncover a clue together to getting Moni out of the cage. So you'll see a link in the chat box also to buy raffle tickets you know, one for five, four, no, five for 20. I think that's how it goes. One for $5, five for 20. Our raffle will be announced at the end of the fundraiser all the way on December 4th. So you have plenty of time. Just in time for the Hello? holidays. Can someone donate something now? Hello? Just click on chat and follow the link. Any small donation, donation will Anybody work. Anybody help? Oh, I think we got something. Dennis, Hello? please look, look for the clue. Huh. Screwdriver, what the heck? Hmm, screwdriver. <clears throat> I think we need a video here. Where is that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I can see she got a screwdriver. Let's hope she's got fast wrists. Let me see how this is supposed to go. Okay. Huh. Oh yeah, she's working hard. So it takes some time. Yeah. And take a hot minute. Maybe <clears> two. <throat> I see. 
So the cage is a metaphor for the financial problems open source is facing. And we are metaphorically freeing the gallery from its cage. Now, bye -bye. <laughs> now you're cooking with gas. In any case, let's hear some more from artist Camilo Godoy, who had a show at the gallery last year and who donated to the fundraiser. Camilo? I am making this video to uh, share my absolute love and gratitude uh, towards Open Source Gallery and their commitment to artists and in particular um, to me as an artist who has been able uh, to benefit from um, Open Source Gallery's exhibition programming. I had uh, an exhibition uh, there last year and I want you to uh, support uh, Open Source Gallery by contributing to uh, their fundraiser for this year. And uh, I contributed to the fundraiser by donating uh, one photograph um, that you can purchase. And that photograph is uh, this self-portrait uh, that I made uh, a decade ago uh, when I was uh, a 20 year old artist with very, very long hair. And I made a series of self-portraits around that time uh, of me uh, in the landscape so um, I hope that you can support Open Source Gallery by uh, purchasing this photo or other artworks by other incredible artists. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day uh, and best of uh, luck and love to Open Source Gallery. I am making this. Um, what are you doing? <clears throat> huh? What? Can you get off your phone, please? Ooh, girl, I'm just checking the Nevada votes and playing words of friends. <laughs> We're supposed to be telling people what they can do to support open source in their hour of need, not checking your phones. Right, right. How do we do that again? Okay, let me explain. Firstly. <laughs> Firstly. Yes, you're here with us. You can buy an original work of art at our virtual fundraiser art sale. The 2020 Fundraiser Art Shop launches tonight, so make sure you visit and buy some art. It'll be open through November and December, till December 4th, which I think is a certain person's birthday, <laughs> or until we run out. So let me get this straight. Instead of the usual auction with all of its excitement. And disappointment. And disappointment. You can look at the photographs in the Fundraiser Art Shop and then know the price already, no must, no fuss. Hmm, now I'm paying attention. Good. Let's see how we're doing with donations. Anybody, anybody got something to give? Does that mean an angel gets its wings? Nope, somebody just gave $75. Whoop, whoop. Wait a minute, I feel something. It's not wings exactly, but... Aha, it's another clue. This one says hammer. Ooh, that's a nice big red hammer. I Ooh. think she can do some damage. Can she with get it. to it yeah, though? I don't know. Just... Oh, she got long arms. <laughs> but a rat doesn't come along. I'll bite her while she's. It's New York. There's probably already. I know. There's rats all over that place. I'm sure. Oh, all right. Okay. Progress. <laughs> All right, well, we wait for her to work her way out. We'd like to talk to you about some of the events that are happening tonight. In addition to seeing some of the programming that has been happening over the past year, we'll also have a few prize giveaways. <laughs> That's right. We are going to have a quiz about some open source history and giving away some things from the shop. If you play and win, you will get an open source tote bag with a design by Chelsea Hill and spread love faces with the mural art from the gallery itself that was painted by Boa Mistura. That's right, toting and not spreading germs. Let's see how Moni's doing with that hammer. Ooh, that cage looks pretty solid. Ooh, I know, it really does. Action. All right. Oh, there she goes, okay. 
Ah, she oh. got something loose. Go, Monica. Go, Monica. Go, Monica. Woo. All right. <laughs> All right. During the pandemic, open source had to adapt, like everyone else. The program had to allow people to enjoy art while social distancing. The Artist at Home series, pioneered by board president Charlotte Mendelar, enabled us to travel into artists' homes from Brooklyn to Uganda, giving people a unique perspective on the artistic process. We also started a summer concert series called Quarantine Jams. Wait, quarantine jams? Mm -hmm. Weekly concerts in front of the gallery doors. People could socialize at a distance. Okay, that sounds cool, yet oddly medical. <laughs> Do we have any of that recorded? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Hit it. That was cool. The best thing about the concerts was that the community really came together. They sat in chairs and sometimes danced in the street enjoying the music. The musicians were nice enough to donate their services and just work for tips. The Artists at Home series featured artists from the neighborhood who were also staying home, like you and me. The computer allowed us to go right inside their apartments. Here's a clip from Melissa Diaz, an artist who lives in Brooklyn. I was thinking a lot when I was at home in Florida about how much my work is like a direct connection to my grandmother's sewing and the things she would create and like making something out of nothing. And that, and that's when I thought of the intergenerational creativity because she grew up with nothing um, in the mountains of Puerto Rico and raised most of her siblings. So, she just did shit and she was going to get it done. So everything she made in her home was the Puerto Rican. I would so live there. I know. The colors are so pretty. In addition to Brooklyn, Open Source even took us to Alaska. Wait, you went to Alaska, right? Yes, that's true. Virtually. Here I am interviewing Nicholas Gallinan at his home in Alaska as he talks about some of his work around the show he had in 2019, the value of sharpness when it falls. And another, uh, for me, I, I feel like I, we, as an indigenous artist battle, um, I, I like stereotype um, through institutions and and ec economics of culture and art and and um the battle of that um often means that people bring their own um presumptions or, or their own ideas of authenticity to what we're capable or allowed to be or or how we're allowed to express perspectives and experiences uh so i you know i've try to lead by example and demonstrate uh, ways of doing that where it challenges those perspectives and and in a sense it liberates liberates ourselves um, baby 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 what has remained constant at open source is our commitment to community for its sixth season of how to build a fire everyone moved online for, yes, for the last Friday of every month, we continue to tell virtual or stories to a virtual audience. And uh, it also allowed to our, us to broaden our community so we could reach stories from people from across the country or across the world. Here's a word from the founder of How to Build a Fire, Terrence Degnan. Hello, my name is Terrence Degnan. I run a storytelling event 
at Open Source Gallery called How to Build a Fire. Um, it's been going on for seven seasons and there's been 15 different hosts. Um, open Source to me has always been about community building, um, about getting people together around the arts, people that might not meet each other um, on the day-to-day -day basis. Um, people in Brooklyn, people in New York, even people th throughout the world. Uh, thank you, Open Source Gallery, and here's to the future. You know, I could go on and on about all the programming here at Open Source, but I think now would be a good time to talk about some of the art that will be available at the end of the evening to those of you who know. Let's take a sneak peek at some of the wonderful art available for sale at the shop. Steve Mallon's photo Gondola, edition two of 10, is a 10 inch by 33 inch photograph that blurs the lines between man-made and natural beauty. From his series, Passing Freight, this iconic rusted train car bless, blends into the stark Nevada landscape. Or check out this sculpture by James Hanahan. These concrete letters dusted with glow sand can be placed in any kind of array of your choosing. They spell nothing is set in stone, but of course they are stone, so <laughs> that's ironic. Move them around and they could also spell no ghost in intestines or is it nonsense tonight? There, it's true. There are no ghosts in intestines. And sometimes it is nonsense tonight. Yeah, I know, I know. I don't think they're ghosts in intestines. Okay, <laughs> because of the pandemic, collaborative artists Su Young Shin and Antony Bodlevich had to postpone their gallery show in 2020, but they adapted and moved online with Tales Your Mother Told You, performing and reworking other people's family stories with puppets. Here's a clip from their show. Can you imagine? Oh, hey, Mom. What's up? Oh. Your father just got a letter from his cousin. Oh, you mean the one from Israel? Uh, I know they write a lot, but my dad's never met him, right? Uh, you know your father. So busy in the sh... Oops. <clears throat> what was that? I don't know. It's the wind, I guess. Oh, anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, you were talking about dad. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, you got a letter from your cousin in Israel. You know, your father's never left Brooklyn for 40 years. Too busy with the shop. Oh, that's right. But what about this letter, Mom? Oh, yeah. His cousin told him that he's not really his cousin, but his brother. What? How, how did he not know? Well, your father's real mother and father. What do you mean they're real mother and father? Listen, they're real mother and father. They are from Russia. And they had eight kids. But then... Your, um, his mother's sister couldn't have any children. So she said, hey, I'm going to America. Why don't you give me one of your kids? He'll have a better life. So they just gave dad away? Yep, off to Brooklyn and he never knew. And how many of you have enjoyed the Church of Monica? This Sunday morning lecture series has continued by using webinars to present lectures, sometimes from across the country. This spring, Open Source invited Neil Katz to give a presentation on the connection between origami and architecture. Joseph Alberts, um, when I was doing research for um, the workshop in Illinois and also a couple above, um, a couple before that, um, I was very surprised, although I shouldn't have been. Um, that Joseph Alvarez was also very interested and in teaching, in fact, at the Bauhaus origami techniques to his students, and even using curved origami. So these are some examples of some of the work that he did there. And, you know, there's one image, um, the one in the middle on the right side, that reminded me um, of some of the textiles that any Alvarez was doing. And then there are other origami forms that also seem to be um, related to um, images which can easily be interpreted as textile. Neil Katz mentioned Joseph Alvers using origami in his work. And before I forget, I'd like to give a shout out to the Joseph and Annie Alvers Foundation for their generous gift this year to open source and in past years. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Before we get in further, what, what's going on? Ugh. 
It's all right. I've got it. I've got it. What's in the box? <sighs> Hold on. Whew. Remember that raffle thingy? Raffles? I love raffles. This whole month, we will be selling raffle tickets. Ooh, tell me more. Follow the link in the chat to buy one ticket for $5 or five tickets for $20. Then on December 4th, we will be drawing to find out who will win three great prizes. You can win a free Traeger body work session with friend of open source, Martha Partridge. Ooh, delicious. Or a hypnosis session with Charlotte Mendelar. Wouldn't that be an hypnosis session? An hypnosis session then. The third prize will be an house made out of gingerbread created by professional pastry chef, Heather Miller. I don't think that would be an Anne. Well, house hypnosis, make up your mind. You will have a chance to win some prizes tonight, but right now we are going to take a little interactive poll. So get your fingers ready to type as our webmistress posts them to the screen. Ready? Are you ready, webmistress? All right. How will your favorite arts organization, i.e. open source, be able to survive this pandemic? A, by having kids sew face masks out of found materials, or B, by obtaining a grant from the National Endowment of the Arts, or C, through donations from people like you? That's right. Some of you guessed it. It's B, but it's also C. We do depend on grants organizations, but we need both grants and donations to survive. By buying art, pledging a monthly donation, or even a one-time gift, you can greatly help. Okay, here's another poll. Let's see how you do. How much money do I have to donate to make a difference? A, nothing. Open source programs will continue regardless. B, $100 a day, that should do it. Or C, any amount I give will help. Okay, let's read those results. Are our results in? Ooh, you folks are smart. While it's true $100 a day would be awesome, by contributing as little as $10 per month, you can help preserve what has become a very vital part of us, our community. Let me spell it out for you. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, we have you and we have open source and together we are frozen <laughs> together we can make it through this bad time well are we frozen again well i also have a diagram a little more in detail. If you look at it, you can see that there are a number of ways to get from point B, broke, to point A. It's all good. <laughs> like tonight, you can buy tickets. You can buy raffle tickets. Yes. You can buy art. You can become a monthly donor. Many different ways to keep us moving from point B to point A. Yes, method one, go to the virtual art sale and buy something. We have lots of drawings, paintings, and, and photographs donated by artists who have come to know open source over the years. Method two, donate, or better yet, become a sustaining member. Method three, tell all your friends to visit the website. Method four, feel really good about yourself. Mm, that's not really a method. No, it's not, but you will. That's true. There's the bell. That means we got another pledge. And that means we've got another clue. Read the clue. What? Read the clue. Drill. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see where she's at. Ooh, she's got a drill. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah, there it goes. All right. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I think that's a bad Maybe. break. There's no battery. 
Yes, if only we could get a little more money. Come on, take me to the hardware store. That's more like it. Oh yeah, we got another donation, I think. $50. Ooh, what's that? $20, okay, that's good. That's all good. All good. Let's see how she's doing now. Ah, she's got a battery. All right, that's good. All right, all right, all right. All right, seems like she's finally making some progress. Metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Before we move on to our quiz segment, let's check out a clip from performance from Video Cafe, The Space Between Us, where a performer in Brooklyn dances simultaneously with a performer from Finland across the globe. The compilation was put together by video editor Mark Chandler. Well, that was amazing. Yes, I can't even believe that's possible. It's finally time for our big multiple choice quiz. Although maybe we should wait because it seems like the internet is a little bit spotty right now. Okay, it's working. All right. Now it's finally time for our big multiple choice quiz. Yes. All right. We will choose an open source history quiz questions. If you are interested in playing, please raise your virtual hand by clicking on the bottom of your webinar screen and our webmistress will choose randomly one person from those brave audience members. Webmistress? Um, Teresa, tree. All right, tree. All right, tree. You, Unmute. I'm unmuted. You, <laughs> you <laughs> ask three questions. 
two out of three correct answers will mean that you win. Lily, tell us what she wins. I'd be happy to. They will win a beautiful open source tote bag designed by Chelsea Hill, along with a matching spread love face mask designed by Boa Mistura. Are you ready, Tree? Remember, I am. choice. So wait till you've heard all the answers. Why did open source leave their original space on 17th Street? A, the landlord rented it to a cell phone store. In 2009, Verizon Wireless decided it needed yet another retail storefront in addition to the five other ones within four city blocks. Or B, shut down by the city. After cries of indecencies went up after a painting featuring artistic director Monica Wuerr nursing her son was prominently displayed in the front window, the city closed the gallery. Or C, the boiler next door exploded, consuming the whole building and many others in flames. Answer? Three. C. B. C. She said B. B. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer is C. No, no, I said C. I said C. I said C. Oh, okay. I, I'm corrected. It's you know, it's it's the web stuff. C B. Um, <laughs> she did get it right. The boiler and it caused a five alarm blaze. All right. Next question. Yes. Now it's one right. How many op how many exhibitions? does open source host on average per year? A, open source doesn't really host exhibitions, being proponents of conceptual art and all. The gallery instead asks guests to only imagine what is being shown while holding tightly onto plastic glasses filled with cheap wine. B, five to seven shows per year. There have been so many exhibitions that if one were to cut out a cross section of the gallery's walls, you would see over 140 layers of white acrylic paint and one blue. Oh, that's right, because Camilla Godoy, that was a blue one. Mm, I remember that. Fine, Camilla. And C, one long Ooh. exhibition. Rather than separate the art into arbitrary categories of ownership, open source believes that property is theft and that all of the art belongs to all of the people. B. What do you say? B, B as in Bob. B. That's correct. B is in Bob. Every five or six weeks, a new artist displays their work. And yes, since Shauna, dear, dear Shauna, moved to Denver, shout out to Shauna. Monica, you. Woohoo, Shauna! Okay, last question. What is the kids' program called that's run by open source? A, Broccoli Brats. This camp places an emphasis on nutritional health and creative cooking, making this after school program a delicious choice. Mm. Or B, Cider camp. This camp harnesses kid energy, twisting and pressing of apple cider from apple trees found in and around the city. Children are taught the important life skills like fence climbing and avoiding apprehension. Very important life lessons to have during the zombie apocalypse. Or C, Coco NYC. This after school program focuses on kids' creativity and the transformation of found materials, AKA garbage. Tree? C, 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 as in Chelsea. For a perfect score, the word on the street <laughs> that tips the recycling truck drivers not to pick up a recycling so she never runs out. All right. All right. Since you got a perfect score, three out of three, Tree, you are a winner. Congratulations. Woohoo! Retails for $35. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Uh, let's get back to the serious stuff now. We need your help to raise $25,000 to keep our programming going. Yes, like Lily said, go to the virtual gallery. Take a look at the wonderful donated artwork. This year, we have a special piece that was donated by the family of Alexander Calder. This framed print measures 33 by 47 inches and dates from 1968. It's available by special online auction. So let us know in the chat room whether you might be interested in bidding on this special item. You will be. It's a stunner. Stay tuned throughout the month to see other art as it becomes available at the shop. After buying a painting or a sculpture, pick up a packet of greeting cards or a commemorative poster or face mask. In addition to two new coat, we have two new canvas tote bags designed by Duke Riley and one by Kat McDermott. We have those greeting cards right there. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting toward the end. <sighs> Alas, 
the end of the evening. Let's see how Monica is doing. I think she's still inside her cage. We have to get her out. Well, she could spend the night. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, in order to get another tool, all we need is a few more donations to the link in the chat box. The link in the chat. 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 <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Buy a raffle ticket. Pledge to purchase a particular painting or sculpture in our or art shop while we wait. Please buckle up for last year's South Slope Derby race. Hoo-hoo! Hit it. Okay, now see, that was exciting. Let's make it more exciting. Come on, everybody. $50, $25, even $10 will get Monica another tool to help her escape the cage of economic despair and donate, help open source survive. Donate, this donate, COVID donate, slump. donate, 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 donate. Woo, that's some money. <laughs> Woo, -hoo -hoo. wait. Here we go. It says Sawzall. <laughs> That's the right kind of tool. That's gonna, Ooh, she's that's moving gonna faster now because she's getting yeah. hungry. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to stay in there all night. I don't think so. She must she have heard you. <laughs> something but maybe the <laughs> pandemic is over <laughs> wait what's going on what what's happening someone's pushing out of the way I just want to emphasize again how amazing um, the art is in the shop. The artists were um, really generous and the artist committee was amazing. Um, so please go to the shop. It's open now. Um, so yeah, go shop. And I just want to open this. And thank you for everybody. <laughs> Woo well, for but you, for escaping at least temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.
<laughs> All right. Please visit the link in the chat room and or the link in the website to the fundraiser art shop. It's going to be open now. And uh, yeah, buy, buy some, some art. art. Yes. Become a supporting member. <laughs> We can all get through this together. together. Woo! <laughs>